What's going on, beautiful people? Today, I'm gonna to be making a setup for my turtle, Timmy. Timmy! Timmy's so, so cute. He's an absolute favorite. Let's do something great for him. So Timmy is currently in this setup here. You can just see him on the left there. It's a boggy setting. They absolutely love that, but I feel like we can do a lot better. Look, he loves crawling through all of the, uh, the moss that I've put there. But he is now a decent size. I want a lot more swim room. I want a really cool basking area for him as well. So Timmy's a musk turtle. They don't really bask that much, but it's good for him to have the option. And he'll probably get out on there when I'm not watching. As soon as I go near the glass though, he runs forward because he wants me to feed him. And this is the tank right here we're gonna be setting up for Timmy. It's a really good size. I mean, Timmy's just a tiny little turtle to be honest. And I think he's pretty much fully grown. He was a run to the litter and that's why I bought him. So this tank's gonna provide him with tons of swim room. So I've laid the tank down like this because I have got some foam that I want to spray on the background. But before I do that, I need to select the wood because it's going to sort of dry. Now I want like a chunky wood. So these pieces, they might be good for some details, but I want uh, something like that. So have a look at that. I'll get that bit of us, obviously take that off of it. But something like this, like imagine the background being all full of foam now. And we could just have this coming up and out at an angle sort of thing. Oh, everything's gonna be backwards though as I do it, so it's gonna be a bit of a, a head mess, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so this is the foam that I've got. It's black expanding foam. It's from Superfish. I think two cans is enough. I mean, one can might be enough. I've never used it before, so I'm not entirely sure. But I do know that once I get that in there, I just need to completely leave it. Um, I'll have to use sort of ways of propping these things up. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna set up the scape on the flat glass first and then foam around it and that should lock it in, shouldn't it? So this is actually a lot harder than it, than it probably looks, trying to come up with a design backwards and upside down. But if we come around like this, so obviously this is how we're actually gonna be viewing it. Excuse the lights, I'm on tiptoes here, but from that angle, it looks pretty cool. And I made sure that this is the basking area. No, sorry, there, that's the basking piece and it's nice and flat on the top. And it's not too high to the edge, which means that Timmy won't be able to climb out either because they can climb really well. So I'm gonna settle with that for now and I'm just gonna foam it all in everywhere. And then after that foam's dry, we can carve it out, put some pockets in it for maybe some Anubias or some Java ferns, things like that. Um, the whole idea of making this 3D background is so there's more swim room at the front. I want it quite a simple sort of look. I'll have some crypts and stuff in the back, um, depending on if Timmy lets them stay in there or not, probably not. <laughs> I might be able to put some weights on them, but yeah, foam it up. Okay, so it's coming along nicely, kind of. It looks a lot like poop at the moment, but it won't do by the time we're done. One can used, so two cans is definitely enough. And then I can build up some areas as well, make them look a bit more chunky and 3D. It won't look nothing like this when we're done though, so I'll just keep going for now and we can explain sort of as it progresses. So quite a lot has changed in the studio since that last clip, including the plan for the tank. Everything is sort of locked down and solid now. I was going to be, remember, painting it, not painting it, but covering it in that sort of coconut-y husk stuff. I, I don't even know what it is. But I'm changing that now because I want the background to stand out from the actual wood. And apparently this stuff can be quite tricky. You've got to take it out, like uh, get it wet and then let it dry out and then put it on. And then it might add a ton of tannins and all that sort of thing to the water. It sounds like it won't be the best option. So I'm going for something different. I'm just going to carve this all up now and I'm gonna paint it with a cement mix. Yeah, I've got it down here, look. It's uh, like a powder. You add water and sand and gravel and things like that to it. I can just paint it on and let it set. Now, it'll just be a thin layer, so it won't actually affect the water quality or parameters. It will slightly probably on the first fill up, but then it, it's fine straight away because it's such a small amount that it's actually going on. But before I can do that, I need to just carve it all up and get it sort of more flattish and rocky looking.
So that's all carved up. We're looking pretty good. Makes a bit of a mess, but it's kind of like a, you know, a clean mess. It's very easy to sweep up or, or vacuum up. But it, I think it gives quite a cool effect look. Now remember, a lot of these little holes and cracks and stuff are going to be filled in with this cement, but you, and you can make it as thick as you want. So if you want to fill in some of these bits, look a bit like, I don't know, artificial. Whereas this section, because I can get into it better, doesn't. So I can do like a thinner layer on there and then just sort of brush it on thick on these sections and you know, maybe some at the bottom as well. But yeah, it's getting there. Time to uh, apply that cement layer. Why are these lids always so hard to get off? Anyway, look, there's our powder. I want something to put that in and mix it. I think it's one to one, but you can do whatever you want to make it the thickness you need. Now I say that's a bit too runny. Um, I've not mixed it in the best, best way, but that's not a problem. You can just add a bit more powder you want, and I'm gonna add sand to it as well to give it texture. You do have to work relatively fast because already some of it's sort of setting, but it's all right, it's no panic. There's plenty to, to work with. Um, that's not the color, by the way, we will be painting it as well. There we go, there is a whole layer on. See what I mean? It sort of flattens it out and gives it a much more rocky sort of look. Now don't worry about the messiness, like the sides of the uh, tank there. That'll all just come off of a razor, it's just the tiniest thin layer. There's no point in doing that now, I might as well wait till it's all dry, and then we can paint it. So it's now the next day, here's how the tank is set, and all the concrete has dried, but it, what it does is when it dries like this is it gives it a sort of like uniform shading all over, it looks flat, and that's where the paint comes in because we can do like dry brushing and, and highlights and things like that. Now I'm gonna be using acrylic paint because when it dries, it's basically a plastic and I know it's good because I've done it before. So first of all, we wanna make a gray mix. I think there's a late, yep, cap on that. Now this is gonna be a bit of a like a dark gray. And this basically is gonna be the sort of base layer. Bit of water, probably too much. <laughs> and just mix them together. Probably should have done this in a smaller container, which I'll probably switch to in a minute, because I've got like one brush stroke there. But what I wanna do is go in any sort of deeper areas and just brush this one on. Taking care not to sort of get the wood as well. You don't have to be overly cautious with this, but just uh, make sure you're putting enough paint down because all will be clear in the process, well, the next step. So that's our darker areas sorted. Um, it looks rubbish right now, but I'm gonna need you guys to keep the faith. Now we do a much lighter gray, more of a slaty sort of gray, and that can go in all of these really whitish or light gray patches. And that's our main sort of color and then we can highlight until I'll, I'll show you as we go along. I, I used this method before. I used to do Warhammer and I used to do all the painting and the dry hair, dry brushing it's called. Uh, you basically get a little bit of color on the paint and you just, you brush it almost dry and it just adds accents to all the sort of raised areas. Uh, but for now, I just need to get on that color quite roughly, but just filling in all the gaps. Much more white this time. And then just a, a little bit of the black. Remember, you can always add more black if you need to. <laughs> but it's harder to go from dark to light than it is just to, and then a touch of water as well. Again, you can always add more water if you need to. Mix them together. So for me, that's still a little bit too light, just a tiny drop of black now and we should be there. And now we can start applying it to all those other areas. Don't worry, it's all gonna tie in nicely together once we uh, blend it all. So you can see I'm just scratching it over the top of most of it. And then any of the dark areas stay sort of dark that the brush can't get to. And in a minute we can darken it up even further and just add a little bit more black as well. It 
So there is some low lights, some highlights, kind of a bluey gray. So on top of that one goes a darker one and that should tie all of it in nicely. There's some patches as well where there's still some, um, I'm trying to get right in the tank here. But see down there where I've got some on the wood, I'll go over that in like a darker one. If it still looks rough, I could just scrape that off of a razor anyway. So that'll all be looking good. All the edges where it's rough, again, a razor will just bring all of that off and looking neat. But now it's time to add the darker layer. But now it's time to add that darker coat. So that is everything painted up and looking, I think, pretty good. But I want to add some, I've just got some red and some yellow. I'm going to add that to the grey and hopefully get some sort of natural browny look. Tidied up all the edges, obviously, as well. Let me flip it up so we can see what it looks like, put a light on it, so we can see where we stand with it. So here's where we're currently at. Uh, excuse my shorts being reflected. I'll duck down. But yeah, that looks pretty rock-like, I think. I think that looks pretty cool. But it does look very clean, so that's why I got the other paint. I just want to add some sort of dirtier highlights, if you like. So a little bit of light dry brushing, just to give it a little bit more texture and look. And I think we're going to be there. So I've mixed up a brown there. You can see you want to take most of it, the paint, off of the brush, look, and then just dab it away so that there's really not a lot left at all. Like, you want it pretty much to nothing. And then when we take it to here, we just loosely let, let like sort of the, the bits with the most friction just catch the brush. And they just give it a little bit more sort of color and maybe some depth as well. I don't know, just adding a little bit more of a variance in just that gray. Don't want too much because I don't want to take away from the brown of the, uh, of the wood. But yeah, look at that. It's working really well. It's only getting the sort of highlighted areas. And the good thing about it is if you mess up or you want a bit more, you can just add a bit more. If you don't like how much you've added, just go back to a bit more gray and go over it again. You don't really have to be careful at all. A bit like when you put scatter gravel down, you just sort of slap it on. That's what we're doing here. Letting the, the contours of the, of the expanded polystyrene and the concrete just grip the areas and it works really well. Like you don't have to be really like a painter or very good at it. Just working quite nicely, I like this. Oh, I've got a bit on the glass there, but that's fine, it just comes off. There we go, I think we've done a really good job there. Now, if we want to increase the lighting down the area at the bottom, you just bring the light forward a little bit. There you go, and just find like a perfect little spot. And then we've got like brighter areas, darker areas. I mean, I'm gonna put plants all down that bottom back area anyway. Fingers crossed Timmy doesn't like pull it all up, but um, I'm gonna put weights in and a deeper substrate at the back. He only digs a little bit and most of it's always at the front anyway. So that looks great, don't get me wrong, you could stop at that point, but I wanna add some last little details. The last thing you ever do to stuff like this is the highlight section. So I've got very slight amount of, like it's a much lighter look. This is the original gray background, and then this is the highlights. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference between the colors there. And uh, this will just give it that little bit more 3D-ness because it's, it's kind of flat at the moment. And there we go, I think we're there. I think that looks really, really authentic. Um, just those little details that catch the little bits of sand that's in the uh, concrete, just really do give it that more realistic effect, I think. Like I say, not hard to do, quite simple. You don't need to have like immense painting skills or anything, but I think it gives a really good result. Especially we're gonna have, you know, like Anubias and stuff tucked in some of these crevices. It's just gonna make it all join and look really good. Now onto the next phase. No, 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 stop the press. I've just had a thought actually. Now turtles are notoriously good climbers and I've just spotted an area that could be an issue. So this part here on top of the basking area, if I come round. Yeah, so Timmy's gonna be basking there and he's gonna be able to walk up this section and maybe go on this and probably reach across to there and get out. So I'm gonna cut this piece off and then that's too steep for him to be able to climb it. Once he gets his weight flat, he'll just go backwards. So cut that off for sure. Because you are a mischievous little fella, aren't you? Look, look at his paws there. 
big claws on them and they're really grippy so we need, definitely need to take that nubbin off. He's like, who are you calling a nubbin? No, no not you, the, the wood. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, got it off. Right, I've scuffed up the background a little bit. I can hoover all this off and just touch it up again with a bit of paint. That's a bit too light, that one, so I've got a darker one now. That's better. Oh, almost exactly the same as before. Did that by eye as well. I mean, what else would I do it by, but... There we go, good as new. And because I can't be bothered to wait for anything to dry. So there we go, that's that all sorted. Now we do need a substrate system in here because I want to put plants in, but turtles do dig a bit. I mean, they don't tend to dig at the background area, but they run forwards and backwards, or swim, I guess, swim slash run on the bottom, forwards and backwards in that front area, which will bring it like down to like a thin bit of sand. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is my old school method that I used to do a lot, which I don't do so much anymore, but put in aquasol in some zippy bags, like mesh bags, lay those at the back and then cap on top with sand. The reason I don't do it anymore is because I quite often use compost and I just, you know, it's so cheap that I can just throw that away after I change escape or something. So yeah, it's lots of you asking that, why don't you use the mesh bags anymore? It's just because I don't often use aquasol that often, but in this case, it's going to work really well and keep it all clean and tidy, even if he does dig down to it. Yeah, so here we go. Look, I've got a load of little mesh bags, black, white, whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Now I've got aquasol here. It's the fine kind, but it's, yeah, it's, it's the right size. It'll fit, it'll fit in here, it'll stay locked in. There we go. Oh, you only want to fill them about half full because that way they'll lay flatter when, when you're laying them down. If you fill them right up, they're really chunky and you have to use a ton of sand because after these are going in, I've then got this sand, clay sand it is, to go in on top. But these first, I'm also going to stick in some root tabs in each one as well, just to give it extra nutrients. Um, we're going to be having crypts in the tank, so they're heavy root feeders, so that'll help a lot as well. Now for the capping layer, I'm going to be using play sand. Now the reason for this is not because Timmy's a child or anything. Well, I suppose he's kind of young. It's just that turtles are quite derpy and if there's little bits of rocks and things like that, they, they will try to swallow them. It will get stuck inside them and they will probably die. So none of that, no, no detail stones in this one, just a clean sand and hopefully the plants will be enough to make it all look good on that bottom layer. So this is the stuff I got. I got it from Amazon. It's just literally that look. It's like beach sand, but it's all uniform grained, very, very fine. Should look pretty good. It's all cleaned in that and everything as well, so straight in the tank. Oh, it's a really nice colour. Might start using this more often, actually, in some of my scapes, because that looks beautiful. This looks like the Bahamas or like the Maldives or something. Now obviously it doesn't look like much at the moment, but you want to go around and check your planting depth. Like there's not a lot there, good amount there, decent there, loads there. So I need more in certain areas just to make sure I can get those roots to properly get locked in. So it's a very clean look, but we want to sort of tie it all in a little bit more. And I definitely want some rocks. I'm going to go with rounded rocks, it's just better for the turtle. You know, he's going to be jumping off of this and landing it. We don't want to smash himself on anything sort of pointy. So go rounded pebbles, like a river basin anyway. That's, well, they're from creeks, I guess, or ponds. But yeah, that's what we're going with. So the wood's making it look like the flow of the river or water or whatever. It's that direction. So we want to make our skate down the bottom here uh, going that way too. Not too much because I want a lot of sort of room for Timmy to walk around. They do like lots of area on the bottom, so just a couple of rock. I've got a big selection, um, probably not going to use all of these, but this is a really nice piece. Look at that. Got to put that in there somewhere. And then some other ones just sort of filtering down as well. So if we start with this main one over in this area, oh, there's a bit of glue on it. I'm going to get that off because that looks really horrible. Easy as that. <laughs> I don't know where that went. Yeah, so down here somewhere, bury it in a little bit so it's fully stable. I mean, that looks great straight away. And I've got some other smaller ones. Again, this is not really a aquascape like you traditionally do. I'm just trying to create a little bit of interest at the bottom, so some plants to go near, that kind of thing. Maybe a little pile out here as well. 
not overthinking it. A few smaller ones for some detail. This is out of Timmy's current tank, so it's wet. A little bit algified, but you know, it's all nature. It's all nature. Then I've got some other smaller pebbles as well. Obviously not so small that he's gonna, you know, choke on them or anything, but just a little bit more detail, really. Now, admittedly, that all looks a little bit random, and that's kind of the point of it. We need to remember, Timmy's gonna wanna walk around everywhere, so uh, now we can add in the plants. They're gonna sort of tie it all in a little bit better. And I've got some really nice crypts in this tank. They're growing a little bit too big for it, so I'm gonna take them out, leave any sort of runners that are still in there, but these big, big ones, they're gonna look so good in Timmy's tank. It's taller, obviously, and it's just, it's just a bit too packed in there now, so that'll be a good way of sort of thinning it out. So here we go, look, I've collected up all of my crypts. Now, I'm pretty sure if I just put them in like this into the sand, that Timmy will probably be able to pull them up. So I'm gonna put some little weights around the bottom of each one just to help it anchor right in. Once the root systems are as established as this in the new tank, it'd be absolutely fine, because it takes quite a lot to actually pull them up. But like this, I'm gonna put some weights around and that should lock it down for the time being. Okay, looking good. A bit of a crypt jungle, but that works really well with turtles. I might add a few more plants in the background area, so maybe some val or something like that. I'm not sure yet. It might take away a bit from the, uh, the wood. Uh, speaking of the wood, I want to attach some epiphytes so we can put some like bulbitis in the bottom corner because that doesn't mind a little bit of shade and some anubias and plants like that. Again, all these plants work well in lower lighting. I mean, even the lighting we've got here now is, is quite high powered actually. That'll grow any plants, uh, but we can dim it or we can reduce the hours and that sort of thing. So yeah, anubias all over the backs and bulbitis should look good. Oh, and I completely forgot that I had this piece of anubias coffifolia. Look at that, the crinkle leaves look so good. I'm gonna stick it onto that rock there and I can place it just behind this feature rock. I was gonna put it on the rock, but I think it's too nice to cover up with all the roots. And I can put it just behind it and it'll be coming up in that section there. Oh, beautiful. Oh yes, that is stunning. Absolutely love it. That's a, it's quite a rarer plant, so it costs a little bit more, the coffifolia, but it's so worth it. It's, it's so different to any of the other, other Anubias. It looks kind of Jurassic, doesn't it? Oh, loving this so far, keep going. That looks so good. It's completely different to usual kind of scapes, but you know, it's gonna suit Timmy massively. Uh, I'm gonna fill it up now, and the water level is gonna be obviously just below this area here, because that's where his basking area is. So some of this Anubius will eventually try and grow out the water, which will be nice, like having the uh, immersed and immersed states. But yeah, fill it up now, it stops everything drying out. And then I can decide if I really wanna add any more or not. Okay, we're filled, I should probably tidy all this up, shouldn't I? Anyway, we're all filled up, it's looking fantastic. I really love that look. It's a clean foreground, which is perfect for Timmy. There's good gaps in between all the plants as well for him to go in and out of. If he pulls some up, he pulls some up, but you know, it looks great for now. The basking area looks perfect. So look, if I come down, you can see there's the ramp. It's still a little bit misty, this water, obviously, because we just filled it up, but pretty good considering I didn't clean anything. Next up, we can get the filter fitted and then that will just completely clear it. And for that filtration, I've got a nice little cheap internal filter. I've used these lots before and they work very, very well. I'm gonna put it down the side here so it's not too sort of in your face. Now this one's rated for um, a thousand liters an hour, so it's over 10, 10 times, something like that, because we're not even filled the tank right up. No, five times, I don't know. All I know is it's gonna work really well. And the good thing is you can barely see it there against the background, can you? Let's switch it on. <laughs> Now I could of course fit a external canister filter, but I know that these do such a good job. I've used this one on a four foot tank, the same size as that bad boy there, and it's worked brilliantly before. 
So I have no doubts we're coming in the morning and this is gonna be so clear. So it's now been a couple of days since the filter is in and the tank is absolutely spotless, but I've made some changes. So change number one, and you can notice over in that corner, there is no filter. Basically I took it out because once the water had completely cleared, it was just a big block of, of black there and I thought, you know what, we can do better than that. So we've got an inlet that side, we've got the outlet this side, and if we come behind, this isn't gonna be the final place for the tank, by the way, I'm just doing it here because it's just better for production, uh, but we can move it anywhere. So the pump comes down and then we've got the uh, filter on the floor there. Nice little 250 Awaze pre-filter heater if you need it, I don't need one. I also transferred a load of media for my other filters so it's actually seeded straight away. And I've been ghost feeding the tank so that to you know, keep a food source for that benefit, beneficial bacteria that's colonized the whole thing now. So we're technically cycled and ready to go. But yeah, as you can see, look, look at that water. It was already clear, don't get me wrong, I stuck in some AccuClear as well, but looking good. You can also notice I wanted a bit more of a green pop so I added some Bulbitus to a rock there, Bulbitus in the middle section in, in there as well, and then some more on this side, and I just felt that it sort of balanced everything out. I just noticed as I'm doing this, look, Timmy's, he's over here, having a little look, he's getting excited. He must, he can see it, he's like, that's mine, that's got to be mine. It is, buddy, just wait. But I wanna add in some botanicals and floating plants now. That's a very bright light, in, in all honesty, for these slow-growing plants. It will lead to algae, especially with that reflective sand as well. So we want some botanicals down there because he's gonna like to sort of play in amongst those. It'll be like enrichment. And the floating plants are gonna take down some of the light as well, but also pull nutrients out of the water column, leading to less algae. So I've got a few little like oak leaves here. I don't want too many because I do like that clean look. It's just something for him to go in these little corners and rustle around in. Adds a little bit of realism, if you like, as well. It's quite a lot of flow in the tank, so it's trying to push them over that way, but they'll settle where they want to anyway. And then we've got a couple of pieces of water lettuce for the surface. Again, these spread so fast, so I'm not gonna put too much in. And also salvinia. Again, really, really fast multiplying, especially under this lighting. It's gonna just be covering the surface so fast but that's all good. We want a more darker environment for Timmy. Obviously it's all gonna stay over this side because of the flow, but that's fine. And there we go, Timmy's Creek is ready. I'm gonna call it Timmy's Creek, because why not? Now in the past, Timmy's had inhabitants with him, some fish. They lasted a good eight months and eventually I took some of them out. Uh, but they did really well, but they were much smaller. I'm gonna go to the um, shop now and get some bigger fish for this tank, which will be absolutely perfect for Timmy. He's not like a big aggressor. He's only got a tiny little mouth. So if we can get something that suits it, it'll be perfect. Hello. Hi, how are we? You keep doing this, you're like, Whoa. Yeah, but I just find that, you know, this is a long video already. Oh, uh, right, so yeah. yeah. We're already at like 30 minutes. I don't even do. know what you're doing. Okay, as always. <laughs> Timmy's tank is done. Yes, okay, cool. Now I know, now I remember. Okay, fine. And Timmy does do quite well. Yep. Some inhabitants with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a big space tank now. Yeah, yeah. He's still like the size of a 10 feet. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. So he'll be no, fine. He's bigger than, he's bigger than. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, he's I, definitely I, bigger than a 10 feet. Yeah. So I want to put some fish in with him, with him but last time he had the white cow mountain village. Okay. They lasted a good six to eight months, something like that. Yeah. Eventually he got smart. Yeah. You know, they're, they're quite sort of dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that, that going to offend anyone? No, I guess, yeah, maybe. <laughs> they just sort of float about, don't they? Yes. Like, yeah, know, they're, like, they're quite slow moving. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking we go something a little bit clever. Yep. A little bit bigger. Yep. And I'm thinking barbs. Yeah. You agree? They're a bit more smart, they're a bit more aware of it, and they're quick as well. Yeah, they? yeah I'd say barbs um, or even danios maybe. Zebra danios, they are mentally quick. Yeah, lovely with that stripes on it as well. It's really cool. Right, let's have a look. Yeah. Show me what we've got. Have a browse. Yeah, we this need the rainbow one. We need to top it up because it's been really hot in the shop, so it has the water levels dropped a little bit. But look, so yeah, they're out all the coming out. Great, isn't it? Like if we can get that, that's going to go massive. Yeah, I'm really excited cool. for that. Well, we don't know who, but someone logged in to these two lights. Well, we're, we're, we're not saying a customer. It might have been a customer. <laughs> probably was a customer. Um, and had it on 24/7 blue. Oh my so goodness. the blue was on during the day while we were here and yeah. we didn't notice. And then when we were going home, the blue was staying on all night. Okay. So it wasn't until I looked at the app one day and went, oh, that's quite that's, blue. Yeah, that's so right. yeah, since the blue's gone, the algae's gone. No, the wood, wood, yeah, that Maybe wood green. was like, you can see the remnants of the green now, but it was like the whole top yeah. of the wood was green. Was, Their stomachs yeah. are only small, so yeah. they were only able to eat a little bit. They were loving it, I'm sure. Look, yeah, this is it. Those. 
reds. Ah, oh, they're looking good, aren't they? Which ones are these called again, Matt? Millenniums. So there's the boss, you can see straight Yeah, away. he is. <laughs> but it's even when you, it's, it'll be hard to pick up on camera, but it's just those like black stripes sort of thing in the body that you can see. It's just such a cool fish. So here, yeah, let's go and have a look. Yeah, it's a snail. It's a nerite snail that's like... Get it back in. Yeah. Daniels as well. I think Daniels could work, but you know, you've got Odessa barbs in the bottom. Yeah. They're quick, so you've got the males there yeah, and the females. Whoa. Yeah. The coloration on, on the males. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Wow. So yeah, they'd be a good choice. Um, they're number one so far. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Satinios are not as... These, These guys, they're, they're lovely. They're Nariani barbs. So they're a little bit of a um, sort of a species that we don't get too often, to be honest. But they're really nice. They're, they're understated. So they just get that little gold band to them. Yeah. Little red dorsal fin sort of thing. Quite a nice little species. A little bit different. Yeah. Um, we've got zebra danios up the... The old zebras, they look good on the... <laughs> yeah, that's it. They do look really good under the lighting. But yeah, they would work well. They're super quick. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, there's a few different bits. We've got glow light danios, but I find them a little bit... Heidi. They were Heidi in the pufferfish tank, weren't they? They loved that plant in the back mm. and they would ball up in that plant and then come out. So I don't know if they would actually, you'd see them too often. I like the idea of the Odessa barbs. I think the Odessa barbs are going to work. I think they're a nice size. I've never had them and I'm really impressed with that coloration as well. Yeah, there are. We've got loads of other ones. You know, you've got black rubies up the top. You've got a few other bits and pieces. But I think the Odessa's, just because that coloration that they've got at the moment, is yeah. going to look amazing. So we're back from the shop and I just realised that whilst I was there, I forgot to actually plug my mic in. So sorry about that, but it doesn't matter. We're, we were there for Matt and the fish, not me. Um, but I'm just going to put these in and now, let them get used to the temperature. It's pretty much decent anyway. Outside temperature's nearly the same as in here. It's only like three degrees in it. So yeah, they'll be good in a minute. Already looking good, actually. Uh, then we can put them in. I think that'd be better for them to get established and accustomed to the tank. And then Timmy can go in. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. It's time to put them in. Right, here we go, ready for the release. I've never had these fish before, so I'm not sure how they behave, but looking instantly good. Okay, two in the foreground. We've got four females, Matt said, and two males in there. We should see the difference shortly because they're gonna color up so much. But that's a good sign. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it, you can tell straight away. And as with any new livestock in the tank, I'm gonna add some quick start beneficial bacteria. I just think it's a good, a good thing to do, to be honest, just in case, you know, we're gonna make sure then this tank has got all the beneficial bacteria it needs, as well as that ghost feeding and the, uh, the uh, seeding from the other filters as well. That should be plenty. They're staying in one place at the moment, but they're gonna be all over in a little bit. So whilst those are settling in, and they are, they just see them sort of swimming all around in the background area, they get more and more comfortable. I do actually want to add in some mosses as well. Timmy does love, as you can see, just climbing around in and amongst it all as it grows in. Um, but I'm not going to put it loose because it will just blow around everywhere. So I'm going to attach it to, to some rocks. So simple enough to do. I've got some flattish rocks here. I've got like normal super glue. So it's not the gel form. And then you can just cover the whole sort of rock in it. And that means the whole thing's going to be able to bond to it rather than it just sort of breaking off. Get a piece that's about the right size and then stick it right on top. Press just hard enough that it's uh, contacting the, the uh, glue and the rock but not so hard that the glue's coming through because it can leave horrible sort of white patches all on the top. I think that's just enough. And then just repeat the process. And then the last thing to go on is Timmy's basking lamp. So this is UVA and UVB so it's heat and ultraviolet light, so it's everything you need. It's a very expensive bowl, but it, it does everything in one. And there we go, we have light. Timmy is ready. Kate's here as well. Ready to see him go, oh, you running away? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Timmy, are you ready for your new home? He's definitely ready. He has not stopped looking, so he knows something's going on. Come on then. Oh, no, no, just come here. Quite quick when they want to be. Oh, he's <laughs> just a little gentle nibble, just to let me know, get away. So here is Timmy, he absolutely stinks because they're called stink pot turtles and when they feel a little bit threatened, like he will be now, they fart or <laughs> and it absolutely stinks. So with turtles, you don't want to just stick them straight in. I'm going to put him up here and let him go in on his own time once he's chilled. Oh, he's, oh, there we go, straight in, he's happy. He's down on the bottom there, this is what they'll do. They'll panic for a little bit and then it'll just chill right out, but 
This is why I wasn't too worried about that front section because he'll keep going backwards and forwards and digging it. Calm down, little buddy. <laughs> Completely new environment, obviously. If you turn around, mate, they're a little bit derpy. If he turns around, you'll see that there's a, a nice, luscious area to go and hide in for a little bit. There we go, look. One minute later, he's chilling out. And to be honest, to start with, he'll probably clear this whole front section and he'll come in tomorrow and there'll be no sand there at all. But eventually he'll be absolutely fine and find his little chill out spots. They usually have like specific spots that they go back to. So I could always find him in the other tank because I knew where he'd be. Let's go and explore that back area. And I left that a little bit clear, but it's also sort of shaded around there as well, look. So eventually the crypts will creep as well. And to be honest, once the moss grows, he'll drag it everywhere. <laughs> the tank won't look like this at all after like a week or so. The plants will still be alive and everything because I put the weights on them, but they'll get dragged about a little bit because even though he's only little, he's got really strong uh, paws. He hasn't even seen the fish yet though. Oh, climbing over that bit. <laughs> he hasn't seen the fish and they haven't seen him, so that'll be interesting. It's been a long time since he had any friends with him. I say friends loosely, obviously, but he won't, he won't attack them and he won't eat them. They're about the size of him for goodness sake. Kate said to try and give him some food, but I'm not sure if he'll be interested in that at the moment because he's probably just sussing the place out. Yeah, you run that way. We can try though. There you go, he knows this pot and he knows this shaking. Bring him around the front, Kate. He's interested, he can see it. Kate's got to go because you've got to take our little boy to the dentist. Do you want some coming up? He's looking up at it. Yeah, come around. Yeah, look, he's definitely interested. Thing is, when I, if I put it in front of here, it's just going to, no, they're too derpy. And the flow is just going to push those around. We'll leave him for a little bit, and then uh, when he's more comfortable, he'll definitely be interested in having some food. There we go, look, he's found his little hiding spot right in there. He'll get really comfortable, then he's just going to be everywhere, like usual. Timmy's there, and the barbs are just tucked in, just in that background area. So he's right near them. They haven't seen him, he hasn't seen them. I'm really interested to see how they interact. Oh, they're coming around, they're coming around. Nice. Oh, they're coloured up really well. I haven't seen them at all because they've been at the back, but they're getting comfortable. Now we just need a little bit more time for Timmy to. I think he saw them because he started moving. Where are you going, Timmy? You having a little look? Oh, sorry, buddy. I scared him. Oh, he's going, he's going. That's quite nice. Look, there's a whole route down the back for him. That nice shaded area of that overhang. He's going to love that spot. I bet that will be his like normal spot. The barbs definitely know he's there, look, though, because they're, they're coming out into the foreground. They seem way, way more comfortable now. Look at that male. Hang on, there's the male. Right in the centre there. Looking good. Colours are coming through already. They're a good size, really good size. There's no way he's got any chance with those. Oh, this is cool. Look, Timmy's already attracted to the basking area. He's using the side look to grip on with his paws. I doubt he's going to go up there right at the moment. It's too soon. But it's really good to know that he can quite easily just grip to that side and go up if he wants to. He can see the light obviously hitting it and he's drawn to it. I'm going to back away and just leave him to it and let him know that if he is in that area, there is no danger. Oh, that's brilliant. That's so cool, like head poking out the water as well. The fish even came over. That's so good that he can grip the background like that and go up when he wants to. That's a great setup, even if I do say so. I mean, for him, not like, oh, look, there's the bar oh, right near him. <laughs> He's gonna go into hunter mode. He's not gonna stand a chance at all. There we go, you can see it, you can see it. Oh, what's he gonna do? <laughs> even he was like, no, there's no point. They're literally bigger than his head, so he could probably get hold of one, but the second it kicks, like he's, when he bit me just a minute ago, is there's no power at all there because he's so small, so we're all good. So I think another great addition to the studio, I'm really going to enjoy Timmy sort of exploring and, and getting more accustomed to the whole setup. And then the fish getting more comfortable as well. Just like one big happy family. Make sure you subscribe for updates and everything guys because there's no way he's going to use this basking area now but I'm pretty sure some mornings and stuff when I come and he'll be up there and I'll just hear a big plop <laughs> and then he's jumping back in and he'll be... It'll be very, very difficult for me to get it on film. Maybe I can set up like a timer or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, if you want to see updates on the tank, make sure that you're liked and subscribed and all that stuff. You know how YouTube works. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.